Ring adds end-to-end -end encryption, Ubiquity suffers a data breach, and the EMA leak shows up on the dark web. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for January 19th, 2021. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Speaking of internet freedom, you may be wondering why there was no ThreatWire episode last week. There was, it just was not on YouTube. Unfortunately, the Hack5 channel received a guideline strike for harmful or dangerous content on a very old Metasploit video, like years old, which disabled us from uploading our content for one week. So I could not upload or publish ThreatWire on the YouTube channel for Hack5. We did appeal the strike. Certain words can trigger a bot to flag your content. And since our channel has been around for so long, for a good 15 years, we have over a thousand videos. And recent changes to YouTube's community guidelines can affect older content. So their bot made a mistake. I am able to upload my videos again, fortunately. The thing is, hacking has oftentimes been seen by the general public as a crime, and educational content about information security is sometimes seen as a threat by people that just do not understand the intricacies of the genre. YouTube is no different, but this is the platform where we have grown our audience. I do recommend finding me on other platforms as well so you always know what's up, and subscribing to the podcast feed for ThreatWire. You can basically find the videos on any podcasting app that supports video. All of those links are down below, but let's go ahead and get into the news for today. Ring, yes, Ring, they are back in the news. Amazon's Ring Neighbors app was exposing some sensitive information about users, locations, and home addresses. The Neighbors app is for users to anonymously report crimes or public safety problems within their neighborhoods, such as like car break-ins, or in my area, when a bear shows up on people's front porches, because yes, that totally happens here in Colorado. The posts are public, but the names and locations are supposed to remain anonymous for the safety of the users. Now, many times in the Neighbors app, people will make posts with videos from their own Ring doorbells attached to the post. Now, a bug was found that was allowing data from Ring servers to be discoverable, including latitude and longitude and home addresses. Alongside this, posts were also associated with unique numbers that incremented by one each time a new user or each time a user made a new post. So somebody could tie the location data to the user's posts, even if they don't live near you. There was no known uses of this data in the wild. Ring did fix the issue and they have also made some new updates for users within the devices themselves. Now, while older first and second gen doorbells cannot be updated with this new software update, newer Ring doorbells now have access to end-to-end -to -end encryption, finally. This was planned for a Q4 2020 release, but it was slightly delayed and it is now being rolled out. End-to-end -end encryption is opt-in and it is free for users as well. This means that only the authenticated mobile device associated with the user's account will be able to access a video feed or record and any third parties will need to have access to the encryption key stored on the authenticated mobile device to also gain access. In the authenticated mobile device, the asymmetric key pair is generated using RSA 2048-bit signing, and additional ECC 256-bit key pair is generated locally as well. The public key for the instance and for the account are signed and copied to the Ring Cloud. This is just a portion of the white paper that is available to read online, and I have linked that down below. According to reports, end-to-end -end encryption means neither Ring, Amazon, or law enforcement would be able to access your videos. This is still in a trial phase, and it is not available to all users yet, but if it is available to you, you can enable it by opening your Ring app and selecting the end-to-end -end encryption option from your video encryption page in the settings. Did you know ThreatWire patrons have access to my Patreon? private Discord server. As always, you can find all of the perks, including that one, on the Patreon page for ThreatWire. Thank you, patrons, as always, for supporting this show. Ubiquity Network sent out a notification last week warning customers about a security breach and telling folks to change their passwords and turn on two-factor authentication. 
The email stated they became aware of unauthorized access to information technology systems hosted by a third-party cloud provider. They have no indication that there has been any unauthorized use or access to those accounts due to the data leak. The information stored on this server is data from account.ui.com, which is a web portal that users use for Ubiquity products. This domain allows users to manage their devices from remote locations, but it also stores data such as usernames, email addresses, and salted and hashed passwords, so any of that data could have been accessed along with some home addresses and phone numbers if a user had added that information into their portal account. They did not disclose how many users were impacted in this breach. In order to enable two-factor authentication on your Ubiquity account, all you have to do is log in, click on security, then you can change your password, set a session timeout time, and enable two-factor authentication. Their disclosure is somewhat vague. There is no information about whether or not an investigation is currently ongoing to look into this breach, how many were affected again, or what kind of third-party server they were using to store this information. They also do not indicate why it was accessible in the first place or how they are working to remediate the problem so it does not occur in the future. All of which is pretty important to know whenever a breach of data occurs. Big shout out to my Hush Puppy Perk level patrons for sharing their fur baby photos and for the support and to all of my Patreon patrons who link me to big news stories like this one for today. Shout out to Joel for sharing this top story on the Patreon page. Last month, we learned that attackers stole data from the European Medicines Agency server related to COVID-19 vaccines from Pfizer and BioNTech. It was not known how this leaked data would be used by a malicious actor, but an investigation was ongoing and still is. They discovered the breach occurred due to one single IT application, which belonged to the regulator and allowed the attacker access. Neither Pfizer or BioNTech pharmaceutical networks were accessed. The EMA has not named any perpetrators as of last week, but also last week, the data was leaked online and more information was published about what the attacker's intentions appeared to be. The leak included internal and confidential emails dating from November that relate to the evaluation processes for the vaccines. According to the EMA, some of those emails were manipulated before they were leaked to undermine the trust in the vaccines. An Italian security company called Yarix or Yarix stated that their cyber intelligence team found 33 megabytes of data from this leak on a dark web website with a title meant to sow distrust along with links to download the leak. While the EMA does not directly associate their own public update with the Yerix discovery, Yerix did post their news brief four days before the EMA stated the data was leaked. Both organizations mentioned that the data was manipulated to create credibility concerns around the vaccines. So this is all we know about this breach so far, as the investigation is currently ongoing. Do you want to see more videos from me? Check out my YouTube channel over at youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for everything from tech reviews to security tutorials. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.